celebrated a really big birthday this year. So I thought, well, I'm not very well traveled, so I'm going to go somewhere that really takes me out of my comfort zone. And I chose India. Okay. I'm beginning to wish that I'd gone for Tuscany. I'm in my third week in India, and I'm really glad I didn't choose Tuscany. 13 times larger than the UK, this extraordinary country is home to 1.2 billion people. It's ancient and modern, it's bustling and serene. It's timelessly traditional, and yet it has one of the world's fastest growing economies. I started my trip in Varanasi, on the holy river Ganges. I've been on planes, trains and tuk-tuks. I've seen iconic buildings, enjoyed local hospitality, and witnessed a whole new trend in medical tourism. So far, I've traveled 2,262 miles, and now here I am in the arid northwest, wondering what other surprises this great country can throw at me. Travelling through Rajasthan, the land of kings, with Prince Shakti to a mystical city in the heart of the Tar Desert. How much longer have we got to go by camel? An hour and a half, I think. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you won't even feel it. You say that, I'll feel it tomorrow, won't I? <laughs> I may not feel it tonight, but I'll feel it tomorrow, definitely. So, Shakti, how important is the camel? To your, to your life here? As it is breathing or water. Oh, really? Is it's that as, important? Because it's, it's the reason why we've been able to settle down here in the in such sparse desert where there's no water and you have to cover long distances. It is beautiful though, isn't it? It really is beautiful. Do you love the desert too? I'm in love with it. Born and brought up and I'm living it. It really is quite something, isn't it? Oh, God, it's lovely. So are the cameras, aren't they? They actually, they are. <laughs> Much to my surprise, they're quite delightful. If you like, we'll gift you one. Will you gift me a camel to take to Devon? Any time, any time. <laughs> okay. take I'd love that. <laughs> oh, my kids have just loved their own camel. <laughs> They've been badgering me for a donkey, but I think a camel would be better, don't you? Any day, any day. Well, there it is, Gisalmere, the golden city. We made it! We made it! <laughs> like the Taj, there are some historic landmarks that must be seen when you visit <laughs> India. And the Golden Fort in Jaisalmer is one of them. Over 800 years ago, this magnificent Golden Fort rose out of the barren Tar Desert like a mirage. Once the gateway to the silk and spice trade, this citadel has a rich history of money and power. My travelling companion is Shakti, who has lived here for most of his life. He's a member of the Jaisalmer royal family, so I'm in good hands. Prince Shakti takes me to his family home and promptly hands me over to his older brother, Prince Vikram Singh. Hello, Hello Vikram. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you Most very welcome much. to our house, sir. Huh? The brothers are direct descendants of the rulers of Jaisalmer and are a major part of the city's modern history. To appreciate the beauty of this city, you have to make a little effort and walk to the top of what feels like a thousand steps. Plus, it gives you time to think of something witty and erudite to say when you reach the top. That's a brilliant view, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome, actually. It's, it's quite high. Wonderful. This is called the Golden City, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because of the golden sandstone, actually. So you can see, you know, and the government passed a law, you know, some time back that you cannot have the facades without uh, having, you know, stone. Not with bricks, not with colour, nothing. So people were a little agitated at that time, you know, 15, 20 years back. But now it's come back in fashion, so whoever has money, they carve their houses even more. It's almost the colour of butter. It's like yeah. a ghee-coloured <laughs> stone, isn't it? Yeah. The fort is in serious trouble, and due to water corrosion, is now one of the most endangered monuments in the world. The city is literally crumbling away. 
2,000 people living in the fort, an increasing number of tourists and recent heavy rains, the drainage system is just unable to cope. People are using a lot of you know, water for their day-to-day uh, -day purpose. Otherwise, you, earlier they used to use uh, dry toilets and stuff. So that, that is a little issue, you know, and it started raining a lot as well. This is a sandstone, so it takes in all the water. Now, now we've started having proper monsoon rains, so which doesn't help either. Yeah. Earlier we used to have like an inch of rain in one year, and you know. What do you get now, now? Now we get six inches of rain in a day. Okay. So sometimes this year, so. Got, okay, that is that's quite drastic. Uh, with the tourists, the money has come and the fame has come for the fort itself as well. Otherwise, no no one would come here, and that's the source main source of living for people here as well. In the Tourism. City. Yeah, you know, but yeah. you have to educate people, and you know, they have to realize it the, themselves that it's a living heritage. Yeah, living in. and change has to come to keep it. They just have to uh, just work towards it a little bit more, you know. Just just otherwise uh, it will just return way. to desert, won't it? The whole thing will collapse. I hope and just not. become a big sand dune yeah, again. Yeah, I hope not. So do uh, I because it's fabulous. Vikram takes me to a part of the fort which is currently being renovated. Falling apart, you know, a lot of work is being done here and they're using the same technique. You can see the chisel and, you know, the hammer way, the, which was used, you know, thousands of years ago. And what they're doing, they're kind of scoring the surface so they can then presumably... Match the thing, you know, because yeah. earlier it's not uh, as clean, the texture, you can see the stone is, uh, over the years it's, uh, you know, yeah. like sort of uh, roughened up a little. So they are trying to match the same thing and putting it like stone by stone again. Would I be able to have a go at that, doing that stone business, do you think? Sure. Yeah, I can't actually get any of it off at all. So I've always rather fancied myself as a bit of a sculptor, but frankly, I don't think I'm cut out for it. It's really hard. I think we'd be here another 300 years if it was left to me, because I'm not actually really <laughs> making much impact. Wherever you look in India, there are pictures, statues and images of Hindu deities. An astonishing 330,000 gods and goddesses are worshipped and play a crucial part in everyday life. It's really very pretty, isn't it? The streets are lovely. And Ganesha appears all the time, the, um, the god with the head of an elephant. Actually, Ganesha is supposed to be the, you know, uh, the god for good luck. And, you know, you call Ganesha before anything. You know, you invite Ganesha into your home and put Ganesha's uh, either a statue or a photograph or print or whatever. Basically, you know, they protect the house, so they always then, on top of the main door, you'll find, you know, a Ganesha statue or a painting or something. Legend has it Ganesha was guarding his mother, Parvati's house, when she was taking a bath. His father, Lord Shiva, mistakenly cut off his son's head in a rage when he refused him entry. On realising his error, he swore to make amends by taking the head of the first living thing he found to place on Ganesha's body. An elephant crossed his path, and the rest, as they say, is history. I'm just sending a few postcards home. I've got these, um, these pictures of the Hindu deities. This postcard is of the goddess Durga, who is the Divine Mother and I'm sending this to my divine mother, Katie. And this one is an incarnation of Vishnu, and this is Krishna. And Krishna is usually depicted as a child, childlike figure, rather cheeky, naughty little child, and, um, and usually Krishna's playing a flute. So I'm sending this to my daughter Emily because she's got her grade two flute exam in a couple of weeks. What I find really touching about Vikram is that he has a huge sense of um, contact to his ancient ancestors. And I think it's because this society believes in reincarnation and asking your, your long dead ancestors for their help and to watch over you, that they feel that wonderful connection. It's something that I really, I don't have at all. I have no, no sense of of anyone, um, you know, looking after me from above or any, any connection to, to my kind of ancient history. I suppose I find that quite enviable. It must be quite comforting sometimes. <laughs>
This evening, Vikram has invited me to a private performance by a traditional Rajasthani band. They are actually uh, the best musicians in Rajasthan, they come from here, the folk musicians. So, they are, you know, different community all together, Muslims, but, uh, you know, different uh, sects, you can say. Oh, really? So, they are the only ones who wear coloured turbans as such, and they are closer to Hindus than Muslims, and they are allowed to sing in the temples. Oh, I see. And they sing for gods and goddesses as well, you know, Hindu gods and goddesses, which generally, you know, Muslim priests or any Muslim would do. You know, so they are, they are basically uh, our family musicians, so which have been there for generations. It's called a uh, Alam Khana, which is a special band for the royal family. How wonderful to have your own special band. <laughs> <laughs> What a romantic way to end my time in Geiselmere. Sadly, this is my last night, and it's time for me to leave this spellbinding place and move on to discover a very different flavour of Indian life. I hadn't really realised how many words I use every day at home are actually Indian words. Shampoo, for instance. Champi is actually the Indian word for to massage. Massage your hair, shampoo your hair. Pajamas. Pie, meaning leg. Jamas, meaning garment. Leg jamas. Leg garment. Put your pajamas on. <laughs> word do lally. Do lally tap. Do a lally was actually the town where. Um, where the British soldiers went to, to rest up before they were sent home after active service. And uh, Dualali, uh, tap, tap actually means fever, so this place became synonymous with an illness, with a fever, so it was Dualali tap, so you went a bit strange and had a bit odd, you would do Lali tap. Avatar, which is a word I only ever heard of recently with the movie, actually means another form. It's an Indian word, a Hindi word. Some of the gods come in another form and it is the avatar. There's always a festival going on somewhere in India, and quite frankly, I could do with a bit of a knees up. So I've come to Ahmedabad, Gujarat's largest city, because I've been told that everyone comes out of the woodwork to take part. I'm off to meet a local family and join in the celebrations. How exciting. Navratri, the festival of nine nights, is celebrated all over India. But here, Narmanabad, the Gujaratis, do it bigger and better than anywhere else. I have an 11-year-old daughter, so I know that if anyone can throw some shapes, it's a teenage girl. So I ask if my local guys could be of a similar age to my daughter. May I introduce sisters Archie and Angie Shep. They've lived in Ahmedabad all their lives and know the city inside out. Most importantly, the in place for shopping. So can you just remind me again what's this the name of the festival, I find it really hard to pronounce. Yeah. yeah. Nav it's Nav Navratri. Navratri. And what will we be doing tonight? It's, it's our folk dance. Folk dance is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And what will I be wearing? Do, can I get away with just the colourful top or will I need to wear? Yeah. We'll yeah. be wearing Chanya Choli. Chanya Choli? Yeah. Chanya is a long skirt. It's a pretty long skirt which we'll be wearing. And then a blouse on the top. And there'll be a long cloth material, which will yeah. be covering your head with that. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, this one's See. pretty. That is pretty. That's quite... Yeah. Do you not think that might be a bit much for me? That's nice. I quite like that one. Yeah. Are you sure they are another one? What colour are you wearing? We, uh, we wear pink and blue. blue. Pink and blue? Pink yeah. and blue. And you're wearing pink and, and blue as well? Green and pink. Green and pink. Maybe I should yeah. go something a bit different yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Really go for black or something. Oh, that one's pretty. 
Is it? Yeah, that one's the best. Does that look good on you? Will it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like practice a bit simple right up for that. Yeah. Let's see what size it is. Oh, they've got this, that sort of waist, this that's okay. The, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. nice. So that's the skirt. Can I just see what length yeah, yeah. it is? It's a long This size. one's the yeah. pretty one, yeah? Yeah. Do you like that one? Yeah, I'm, what I'm going to have to do is see if that's going to fit me. Is that going to fit me? Yes, it does fit And that goes with it, does it? Is that, yeah, what's that? It's a choli. It's a choli. Yeah. Okay. It will wear it on your... My head? Yes. Yeah. 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 Are we all right? Yeah, like yeah, this one. Yeah. 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 So I think, should I pay for this one yeah. then? Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's gorgeous. Would you mind packing it up for me? Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. 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 Thank bye. you. I can hardly bear it. They look very nice in their outfits. The men do, like or the ladies? Yeah. Both of them. Both of them, really. You know the shining glitteries, you know, when the light falls on it, you know, they really glitter up. They yeah. really... They Is it really pretty? Yeah. Really. And are you going to get me dressed up, then, in my new outfit? Yeah. I'm slightly nervous about my outfit, because the top feels rather... What's the word? Small. Yeah. <laughs> I've been loving Indian hospitality ever since I arrived, and true to form, the girls invite me back to their home, in a modern suburb of the city, for a traditional Gujarati family meal. Yeah. Okay, very good. And that's pandada. Pandala. It's like a green leaf kind of thing, but you know, a bit like a homemade thing. How lovely. Can I try them now? Yeah. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's yeah. lovely. Who made that? It's delicious. <laughs> Pangala. Pangala? Pangala. I'll never be able to, never be able to have it again because I won't know what to ask for, will I? Oh, it's lovely, though. Small pizza. Little tiny pizza. Extra mini pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little weedy pizzas. It reminds me of those evenings at home when I get together with all my girlfriends before we go out somewhere and we have a glass of champagne and a little salty snack. But here, it, it's just the salty snack because because Gujarat is is a dry state there's no alcohol here at all which means I shall I shall have no hangover in the morning which will be a good thing but it also means I've got to dance sober which is a bad thing oh you look really pretty well, you help me choose it thank you yeah. thank you very much yeah. thank you thank you very much good I'm glad oh yeah. thank you yes. Lovely. Thanks, darling. Yeah, yeah. Here's the earring. My earring. You look so yeah. hot. Thanks, darling. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> That's great. I can get it again. How's that one? Like that? Yeah. Oh, it's ready? Okay. So do you look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, darling. So, who's going to teach me how to dance? Everybody? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> In the big time. Dress rehearsal is over and I'm feeling great, but I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is quite literally the hottest night of my life. It seems like the whole city is taking part, and although I'm a little nervous, it's hard to be shy and retiring when you're wearing this many sequins. Before the dancing begins, the evening starts with a religious ceremony, honouring the goddess Durga. Navratri, meaning nine nights, is a celebration of the legend of Durga fighting and fending off a demon for nine long nights.
Traditionally, the gerba, an Indian form of dance, is performed around a pot in a circle. The word gerba is Sanskrit for womb, so ultimately this festival is a very feminine affair, where women worship the divine mother goddess Durga. Quite right too. It's a very beautiful event and it's, it's a family event. There are children here and grandmothers and there's food. It's a cross between a barn dance and a disco. It has elements of sort of modern India, but also it feels a little bit like something from wartime Britain because, of course, no one's actually touching each other when they dance. The men and women are all dancing together, but very separately. The young girls are looking absolutely beautiful and the young boys are frankly looking a little bit hopeless, I think. It's delightful, really, and I think I've actually found probably the best festival in India. As much as I hate to leave a party, I've got a plane to catch. I'm off to Mumbai first thing tomorrow. And I know I've said this before, but I am so hot, I've got to go home and have a large drink of water and a long, cold shower. Mumbai is India's biggest, richest and fastest growing city. It's the ultimate city of contrasts. The world's most expensive home, worth $1 billion, is here. And yet, about half of the city's 16 million people live in appalling conditions, in sprawling slums. Previously known as Bombay, Mumbai is on the west coast, and it's predicted to be the world's most populated city by 2015. I'm meeting Deepa Krishna, who was born and bred here in Mumbai. She's passionate about this city. She's going to show me round. It was only in the 1500s that uh, the Portuguese discovered the island of Bombay. And there was this Portuguese ship that sailed into Mumbai Harbor. And uh, they liked it because, you know, the bay was deep and calm. And so they called it Bomba here, Good Bay. And that's where Bombay came okay. from. So it's from a Portuguese uh, word. And then for about 150 years, nothing happened. Until uh, in England, Charles II came into power. And Charles was broke. And he uh, sort of, you know, improved the family fortunes. Married this Portuguese princess called Catherine Braganza. As part of his dowry, she brought to him the island of Bombay. Oh, wow! Yes. So he then leased it to the East India Company uh, for the princely sum of 10 gold pounds a year. Wow. And that's how uh, then the East India Company got their hands onto these islands. But they saw the potential of the island as uh, a good trading port. Help me understand what makes Mumbai tick, Deepa takes me straight to the famous buzzing Chor Bazaar and the Bhulishwar market area in the south of the city, where India's make, do and mend work ethic becomes ever more clear to me. This whole area is called Bhulishwar. Bhulishwar. Uh, this bazaar area uh, was settled by uh, merchant communities, by Hindu, Jain and Muslim merchant communities with the primary focus being to make money. So what this is, is, is the city's biggest flea market and uh, everything that nobody wants comes here uh, for sale. So it looks like money is being made out of just, you know, grease. But uh, what they're doing here is they're stripping these parts uh, and they're removing the brass which is being put into that and then the steel bits are going here and this will be then sold by the kilo. So, so this uh, is, this there, is there's a recycle market. Scrap here. metal so basically, scrap metal but on a very, very yeah. delicate scale. They're not just crushing everything in a big heap, they're actually no, 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 they, the expensive yes, bit there. Yes. The reason why this works is because there is uh, labor available that will do the fine job of stripping it. Yeah. So that it gets separated into its components. But these guys really work for their money, don't they? I mean, that is grim job, isn't it? It is a grim job. But then again, you see, 
Uh, it is because jobs like this are available in the city that the city attracts so many migrants. Yeah. I mean, to us, they look like grimy guys that are doing a grimy job, but to them, when they go back to their villages, they're heroes because they go back with a lot of money. They go back wearing sunglasses and with armloads of gifts for everyone that they're going back to. So the, the, the spirit of migrants, it really defines the essence of my city. Why has everyone got either a red beard? A lot of the blokes got red beards. Well, they dyed their hair a really funny colour. <laughs> Is it fashionable? It's for the same reason that women tweeze their eyebrows. It's just vanity. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> so red colour hair. Basically, you're not allowed to dye your hair black by your religion. So, so then you do red. And then it's just to prevent the white from showing. <laughs> Are there women that like that? Would be. you like that? A little, a little bit of red, red hair? <laughs> no. 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 My preference is for black. Is it for black hair? Yes. But then, but then if it's going to go grey, let it go grey, grey. No, I like the salt and pepper. I yeah. No problem. No, exactly. With salt and pepper at all. Quite a lot of dogs around, aren't there? Oh, there are many just... dogs around. No, we have a big stray uh, dog problem. Because the city is so uh, densely populated, produces so much trash, obviously there are enough animals that can make a living scrounging off the garbage heaps. But then there are associated problems when you have a huge dog population living side by side with a huge yeah. you know, human population. There are uh, some very good non-profits. You should meet some of them, in fact. Uh, they, uh, they are dedicated to stray dog welfare. And you know they have feeding programs, sterilization programs to make sure that a dog population can coexist side by side with a big. So they're not trying to get rid of them. No, they're not trying to get rid of them, but they are trying to get rid of the problems that, that are associated with them. At Look the at the <laughs> hello, everybody! Everyone's really big shopping day today. Um, so wedding shopping. That they're doing. Wedding shopping. Oh, really? Day. Who's getting married? Kis <laughs> kishadiye Congratulations on your wedding! Congratulations! How exciting! This is your sister? Cousin. Your cousin. So there are two oh, you're getting married as well? Oh, not the same day. What a day that's going to be. Will you be dancing? I did the dancing in Ahmedabad. I did it in with lots and lots of people at Navratri. Hundreds of people. All did a huge circle. I made such a fool of myself, you've no idea. <laughs> Big fat sweaty actress. It's really hard, it's simple. Easy, well, I, it was. I found it incredibly hot and I made a bit of a fool of myself, but I don't care, I enjoyed it. Happy, happy wedding to all of you. Happy wedding. Bye bye, darling. Bye bye. Nice to meet you. I couldn't stop thinking about all the street dogs I'd seen in Mumbai. I've got four gorgeous dogs, and to say I have a soft spot for the canines is something of an understatement. So to find out more, I followed Deepa's advice and contacted a charity for stray dogs, where Pooja Mishra, the project manager and vet on call, kindly let me join her on her daily round. So if we see a dog, now, will you kind of clock it and think, oh, I'll remember I've seen that dog there? Or if it looks unwell, would you stop and have a look at it or something now? Yes, if I see an injured or a sick dog, I would, yeah. on my own, treat him and uh, add him on to our list. I can show you our list, actually. Well, this is interesting. So There's so many cases that uh, it's nice to have. Yeah, no, you really know, because you couldn't possibly remember, remember it all yeah. otherwise, could you? So that's a sort of makeshift muzzle you've got there with the yes, rope, is yes. it, Pooja? And what's the name of this dog? Rinku. Rinku. All right, baby. All right, sweetie. Rinku, Rinku, it's all right, sweetie. It's all right, baby. She's had a little mouth watering. All right, Rinku. All right, Rinku. And how do you pay for all these these um, medications for the animals? It's through donations. We, is it? Yeah, because this is like we are an NGO, so we don't get any funding from the government. Right. So we have to raise the money. I've always assumed, in fact, that the dogs are strays, but in, but I'm I'm learning that they're actually normally associated with people or families or the street they live in. A lot of these street dogs are actually pets of the poor people who live on the streets. And is or that where you step in because they can't afford to look after them? 
Yes, because they, they cannot afford to take them to a veterinarian. So. And do these belong to these ladies? Yeah, these they belong dogs? to these ladies. They look after these do dogs. Do they? And, they and these ladies live here? Yes, they, they live here. That's their home. Right. So would these animals have names? Yes, they have names. They've named, I think, according to where they've got them from. So this okay. one's Baikala, that's Chaupati. She's Ronnie. There's and the cat is Munu. Munu? Munu! Have you looked after these dogs before? Yes, we've been looking after them for years now. Come on, Ronnie! And she's like, you've done that once, you've done Come that on, twice. Come on, Ronnie! You want to do this all the time? Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. Oh, the Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's interesting for me because like, the British have got a reputation for being ridiculously soft about their animals. But it's, it's... It's very interesting to see that actually this family here are ridiculously soft not about their idea. animals too. And you'll, you'll come across many such families. Like it's really? Not, it's yeah. not an exception as no, such. Is that really. right? Screen number three, gold. Gold. J. Do you know what number that is? <laughs> Good boy. Do you know what number that is? Three. Three. Oh, you copied that, you did. <laughs> This is incredibly moving. These people live here um, with all their children under that piece of plastic. And um, they still, I don't know how they're doing it, but they manage to be incredibly kind, not only to their children, who are absolutely adorable, but also to all these animals. <laughs> takes me to the welfare of stray dogs kennels where strays are brought in for neutering rehoming or to receive medical attention that can't be done on site this is Mumbai's very own Battersea dogs home where approximately 13,000 dogs are treated every year who are these 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 two kennels these are dogs that are either sick or injured and can't be treated on the street so we've got so them they, here. Oh, they've got wounds, haven't yeah. they? And they've got a couple of stitches and things. It's Hello, healing. Baby. It's all healing. Like the, uh... Hello. They're quite skinny, aren't they? Will you try and fatten them up a bit before they go out? Once they go back on the street, they put on weight. That's the whole thing I was telling you, that the kennel environment somehow... Because they don't they're like they're, it. Yeah, so they're Unless happy. they're not used to and it. And they're happy, but not really. Hello, dogs. They definitely would be happy on the street. Yeah, happy on their, in their home, and really, their home, isn't yeah. it? Who's in here? Now, these, these dogs... Uh, these are the ones that have come in for sterilization. Oh, okay. So you see, we ma ma notch their ears. Hello, everybody. That's the mark of sterilization. Oh, what is? What's the mark of sterilization? Hello. This uh, notch. Off the ear? Yeah. It's a notch. And then you know they've been sterilized? Yeah, they've been sterilized. Because males, you can tell, but females, unless there's some marking. Yes. Oh. Hello, little nervy. That's a very yeah, nervy little there. dog at the back there, isn't he it? He has a name. Hi, he's, what? he's scared of these guys because maybe they... Darling, it's all right. How many dogs have you got here at the moment, Pooja? 121. 121. Usually they're about 150 to 180. How many do you manage to find adoptive homes for? Close to 170 dogs have been adopted. How many? 170. 170. So it's not a massive... Adoption program yet? Is it? You need to tell people. Yeah. Yeah, I know we've got four. And four cats. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay, no, no, give it some thought. No, I understand. I do understand, yeah. Okay. Yeah, love you too. Think about England. Would that be nice? Would that be nice, my sweetie? Mumbai is 
a city of contrasts, and I'm keen to see every aspect of it, so I've arranged to meet a real-life Bollywood actress this afternoon. However, I've got a few hours to kill before then, so I go for a wonder and come across something extraordinary being practised in a side street. You know me. I had to go and have a quick look. I'm sorry. Hello. Sorry, my name's Kama. Is it? Hi, hello. Hi. So what are you doing? Yeah, we are doing practicing. That's a game of uh, Indian game, ethnic game of India. It's, uh, it's called Malkham. It's a very old game from our India country. It's called Malkham. Malkham. Yeah. It's, very, it's a very nice game. It's very old. I've never seen anything like it in my life. This is extraordinary. Mm. My senior player, Rajesh, he's doing from the uh, last 15 years. He looks incredible. He's like he's made of rubber. Yeah, it's very really nice. It, it, you're using his power, his flexibility, his strength. These children, do they? Do you teach the children? Yeah, one of my students are there. The one of my colleague, that Vinayak sir, they are teaching that student all there. It reminds me a little bit of um, yoga, some yoga. Yoga, position. yeah, some yoga positions we're doing on pole and rope also. It's absolutely extraordinary. Do you think I'd be able to do it? Hmm? Do you think I'd be able to do it? Yeah, you have to do it. <laughs> can I step over? Yeah. Oh, can I even go on the mat? <laughs> Come on, let me see if I can do anything. Can I go on the little one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Just put it on leg. One leg. Oh, nice one. Nice one. Yeah. That's all I could do. And now, oh, 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 oh. oh. Just leave, your, leave, your, leave your hand, wow. leave your hand. Balance, nice control. Oh, oh, oh. Very wow. good, very good. <laughs> no, let me take a run at that one now. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. Wow. Look at Actually, that. Actually, what is the speciality of this game? It is uh, playing against the gravity. Fighting gravity all the time. Very hard. Okay. It's going every time up, up, Ooh, down, okay. up, and down, up, and down. I don't like it when he does that. <laughs> It's amazing, isn't it? The Indian government, they are not uh, given the authority of sports. It is not a sports. They are telling it's an art. That's why we are just trying to fight uh, against the government. It is uh, not an art, it is a sport. Yeah, OK, you're trying art. to make it be perceived yeah, yeah. as a sport yeah, and not yeah. an art. How can you not say it's a sport? It's, it's like gymnastics, really, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's a combination of gymnastics, yeah. yoga, as well as athletics, yeah. wrestling. And just uh, just uh, start from last two months. Oh, she's just new to it? Yeah, she's yeah. just new. Yeah. She's strong. She's, look at her go up that rope. She's really good. She's just started. She's really good, isn't she? Wow. Basically, girls are doing rope. Girls do only rope. Girls don't do the pole. No. They do in England. You see, that's what I love about India. Tootling along on your way to a nice cup of chai, and you discover a whole new sport, something I'd never heard of before. Mala, meaning wrestle, can, meaning pole, wrestling polling going on under your very nose. You'd have known it, and what a beautiful thing it is. I wonder if it will take on in Britain after this. I think I might start the Mala Camp Society. Don't look away, this, this could be really nasty. <coughs> it's time to head off for my appointment across town with Tulip Joshi, Bollywood superstar. It'll be nice to meet another actress, see what life's like out here for the turns and starlets, showbiz types. It's gonna take me shopping as well, which will be nice. Hopefully buy something a bit sparkly to take home. And I like that. Mumbai is home to Bollywood, one of the largest film industries in the world. 
It's a multi-million pound business and produces over a thousand films a year. That's almost three a day. When I was selected for a Bollywood film, I was modeling then. And um, I was put through a, put through a workshop, like a, like a theater workshop for acting. And I didn't know anything about it before that. And yes, of course, even for dances, I was put through uh, two kinds of dance um, classes. One was a Bollywood uh, dance class, and one was a, uh, one of the classical styles called Kathak. Kathak. Kathak, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I think it's one of the most difficult dances in Indian, um, uh, in the, uh, amongst the Indian classical dances. Um, I, I love to be a part of the lovely dances, the songs, the dances, the lovely fantasy, the larger-than-life kind of... Uh, it's films. pretty sparkly, isn't it? Well, it I'm is. rather hoping. I know we're going into. We're going right here. Yeah. To, uh, uh, who's this? This is Archana Kocher. She's yeah. one of the best designers in the country. And do you, this is someone you work with a lot, is it? A lot, a lot. I, she's. Let, let, let's just go in once you see her clothes. Sparkly things. Trust me. Once yeah, you see okay. her stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Jewelry box absolutely, here. Absolutely. Uh, do you come here for all your big um, um, frocks for red carpet and things like that? All the time. I, I just I just wait to come here. I need a reason to come here and select my clothes. They're yeah. beautiful. They make me feel beautiful. They make women look feel and look They're beautiful. They're very, very glamorous, yeah, aren't very they? Glamorous. And they? And most of them are light. They, they're you know, they're not the heavy ones that normally have like you know like hundred kilo dresses. They're not like that. They look like that. They're very comfortable. Are they? Very. I mean, these are extraordinary. Isn't well, it lovely? It's really yeah. beautiful. And do you come in here and go, oh, I like that one, and can I try that one? Or I say, I like this, I like this, I like this, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, like I like all it. of it. Do you ever see one and go, oh, I really don't think that's me, that one? Trust me, that I, I just I, I love all of it. Would you go for that? <sighs> okay. Is that oh. nice. Do you want to try that one? Yeah, yeah. Really? I would love you? To okay, I, just... oh, I will take that. Can I choose a couple of you to try on? Sure. I'd offer some... to do it myself, but actually, I just having seen the bust size of that, <laughs> I just know that I'm, it's not going to happen, is it? I think this one's lovely. That is lovely. Is, oh my yeah, god, that's so nice. heavy, darling. This is, that's this so is heavy. Okay, it's not as heavy as most Indian outfits are, trust me. This is okay. Do you know, what do you look so fit? You've got to walk around wearing <laughs> yeah, just, that all the see, time. I wear the outfit and I work out. <laughs> that is absolutely, oh, come, can, I, can I see you in them? <laughs> sure. Come on, darling, I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to get a bloke in to help us Trust with me, it. this is like nothing compared with the heavier ones. This is really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not fooled. I know what these little film stars are like. She's gone in there in a pair of jeans and a, and a shirt, and she's going to come out looking absolutely fantastic. A bit jealous, actually. If I could find something to fit over my head, I'd do it. I might have to wear one of the chairs. So, oh. now, <laughs> so now you become an expert again, dress Indian brides. <laughs> you look so beautiful, Tulip. You look so lovely. Thank you. Okay, the two are very the two most important moves. Yes. One is the pelvic thrust. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on, give me the pelvic thrust. You should know how to Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then you go. The second one should be like Oh, this. I don't want to do that one. Trust me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you it's can do a Bollywood right. song now. <laughs> okay. So basically it's pelvic y and it's bosom -y. Yes. Yeah. It's fairly it's fair yeah. yeah. It's it's universal, isn't it? That's not <laughs> really. You look so beautiful. Can I find Thank another you. one for you to wear? Oh no, you've got your pink one. Do you mind trying the pink one? Okay. <laughs> I'm getting on. Right. Good. But I think that's even more beautiful. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so gorgeous. Two very, very important things okay. for, for an actress, okay. for the heroine of the film, yeah. um, are expressions, okay? okay Two of the good. expressions. Yeah. One is like, you have to give this very sensuous look, you know, your eyes. Yes. And you have to smile. <laughs> <laughs>
take so many wonderful memories away from Mumbai, and I'm genuinely sad to leave. It's so much too often and has shown me huge diversity and positivity in the few short days I've been here. But before I go, I'm desperate to have a quick peek at one of the world's most famous hotels, the Taj Mahal Palace. Barack Obama has just left, having taken over the entire hotel, so finally I'm allowed in. This historic landmark is a testament to Mumbai's strength of character. It's recently reopened in all its glory after the devastating terrorist attack in 2008, where 172 people died. I've arranged to meet Deepa here for a farewell drink. I love Mumbai, actually. Oh, so do I. I do. Yeah, no, so I can really see why. I absolutely, I, you know, I mean, this the, the Taj is a beautiful, beautiful place. It's lovely. But actually, out there in the streets, where the real life is happening, is also quite wonderful, isn't it? The people, the different cultures. This... Yeah, yeah. The city's heart is in its bazaars. Yeah. yeah. You walk the markets, and you've understood the city. Yeah, you've taken back a bit of that Mumbai spirit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I really can. I can see that if you were born and brought up here, how moving away would seem impossible, actually. <laughs> yes, yes, it does feel like Because it's got such a huge personality, hasn't it? Yeah, it is. I've, I've lived in other cities, but nothing quite, quite beats this one. Next week, I head down to the green fields of the south. I meet a local celebrity snake catcher in Mysore. I find a magical healer of the Malnad region. I then journey to the extreme southernmost point of the country where three seas collide.